super strong 3D parts. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. This is Dave in the shop. We've had a week now with the the new Cracker 2, the all-metal uh, higher performance version. And what we did was we made a lot of additional parts uh, to run back through uh, this unit. And uh, what I wanted to do today, share the results of what we got. In this testing, what we did was we made all the parts with the same uh fundamental settings. So these were all set with uh, two walls and 15% infill. That way each part we could test with same same settings. So it's kind of apples to apples. Um, and then in theory what we're doing is just seeing the difference in the in the materials. We used 10 different materials. So that was several types of PLA and then we had a sample of PET-G, ABS, and uh, also some, some nylon carbon fiber. If you want to learn a little more about the uh, test machine and the various parts and pieces, the control box, uh, and then the load cell, and uh, the Arduino project on that, you can look at my previous videos and see the details of how those were built and how they operate. Here's a chart of the results, and I've got it ranked from strongest to least strongest. And uh, as you can see, nylon carbon fiber, no big surprise there, turned out to be the strongest part. The PLAs, there were various levels of performance on the PLAs, so we learned a few things that some of the things like PLA Pro, which kind of had a matte finish. It produced a beautifully looking part, but it's not as strong. And then you see some of the other uh, types of PLA that get stronger and stronger. So PLA carbon fiber obviously was stronger than regular PLA. Another surprise was PLA glass, that particular product. It's very brittle, and I think that's probably part of it. It would crack violently, but it would handle the tension test exceptionally well. PLA high temperature did a good job as well, so that seems to be a good product. A uh, little bit of temperature resistance and, you know, pretty good strength as far as going through the PLAs. ABS turned out to be the weakest, and that was a surprise. Maybe there's going to be a little more testing to go back and look. I don't know if it was a a bad roll of ABS or what, but it certainly surprised me because, you know, general conventional wisdom is, you know, ABS is a stronger material used in structural parts. And of course, PETG, we had a sample of PETG and it just kind of came out in the middle there. PETG, I think, has its characteristics are, are more around flexibility and and, um, you know, certainly there's some temperature resistance of PET, of PET-G. But from a tensile strength test, they tended to just deform and come across. They didn't crack or break the way, in the same way that the, the PLAs or the nylon did. So for me, really, I come out of this with kind of three go-to products. If I need something that is uh, super strong, as strong as it can be, um, nylon carbon fiber that looks like the right way to go if I need something that's pretty strong and has a little bit of a temperature um, resilience maybe I have to use it in the car where it's going to get hot or out in the sun then PLA high temperature looks like it would be a good choice and then for everything else where I don't need a special property just regular PLA save the money uh, and regular PLA performs uh, quite well. Now that we've determined that this nylon carbon fiber is our strongest material, it's time to take our C-shaped test part and just see how far we can push it. Let's see how strong a part we can make. The initial test was all done with parts that had two outer walls and 15% infill. To see what would happen, we made additional parts, nine combinations 
of two walls, four walls, six walls, combined with 15%, 40%, and 80% infill. So looking at the results, what we can see is infills and walls do matter. So as you increase the walls, the part gets stronger. As you increase infill, the part gets stronger. If you increase both, that gives you the strongest part. So we were able to go to six walls and 80% infill on the C-shaped part, and we were able to get 198-pound brake strength. As we started down this path, I had serious doubts about the ability to make a structurally sound, really usable uh, 3D part. Clearly we can, and it's all about using the right materials and making sure that you have the right settings. One other thing, getting to this final result, it wasn't always easy. There were a lot of trials and tribulations along the path. Okay, we've let it set for a few more minutes. Try it with the pliers. It's definitely getting... Oh, there we go. Alright, we're getting the big blob off of here. Yeah, look at that. So we end up solving the problem. We got a new 3D printer. In the next video, I'll uh, talk about what I had and what the issues were and what I bought and why I bought it. This is Dave in the Shop. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember, like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.